This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, having looked at our non current assets held for sale, let's now go through and have a look at the discontinued operations side of IFRS 5. So, when it comes to discontinued operations, there's three things that we need to go through and consider. Uh, before we get into any examples, is what is the definition of a discontinued operation? Uh, when do we go through there and make the disclosures? Uh, and then what are the disclosures that we make? Remember, it's just a disclosure standard, okay? But disclosure with regards to a little bit more of the computational side. So in terms of it being a discontinued operation, uh, we will neither or we will either had to have disposed of it, so it's gone. We've sold it. You know, if we've sold that part of the business, uh, it must be discontinued, mustn't it? OK, uh, or it is held for sale. So we've made the decision to dispose of that part of the business. OK, so it's one or the other. And then the reason why we look at it from two perspectives as being discontinued is because before this standard came into existence, we only really made the disclosures once something had been sold. And businesses don't just sell like that, that they sell over a period of time, don't they? You know, we make a decision, then a good few months later, it gets sold. And in between that period of once it has made the decision to sell and it is sold, it could for the reporting date. And if at the reporting date it hadn't been sold, then there was no discontinued operation, there was no disclosure. Yet the business is sat there going, well, we're looking to sell it. We know we're going to sell it. We just haven't sold it yet. OK, but great. We don't need to do any disclosure. But that doesn't really help the users of the account, does it? So what we try to do is by bringing in IFRS 5, we try to go through there and bring in and encourage earlier disclosure to give more useful information to the users of the accounts. So just be aware when we're looking at this discontinued operation, it does need to be a major part of your business because you know, therefore it needs to be material. OK, uh, it should as well uh, maybe be part of, of one single plan or alternatively, maybe it's a subsidiary. You bought that subsidiary with the idea of quickly turning it around its poor performance with a view to then selling it. OK, so. Even though it's a subsidiary, it will be shown a separate discontinued operation line. OK, but for our exam purposes in F3, we're looking at it being a separate major line of business uh, in a single coordinated plan that, that is being disposed of. OK, uh, so what do we do in terms of when we show it is being discontinued? I think we've already touched upon this already, haven't we? Uh, we were here. This is where we decide we need to sell it. This is whereby it is actually disposed of. Well, there's the reporting date in the middle. So what happens? Well, once we've made the decision that it will be discontinued and it's held for sale, then we make the disclosure. And then likewise, in the following year, when it is actually disposed of, we will make the disclosure as well. So within two reporting periods, we will have a discontinued operation, OK, once the decision is made and then once the sale takes place. If those two decisions take place in the same accounting period, then we will just have one year worth of a discontinued operation. OK, uh, the disclosure, the focus in the exam is likely to be more on profit or loss uh, as opposed to your cash flow statement or financial position statement. And we've seen the disclosure already in terms of your statement of profit or loss. You split out continuing and discontinued operations. Discontinued operations is one line item that shows the profit or loss on disposal if it's been sold, plus all the revenues and costs from that discontinued operation. OK, uh, so one line and then the disclosure in the notes of the revenue, the expenses, the profits and the taxes. OK. Uh, the statement of cash flows, again, you would just separate out either on the face or in the notes, the cash flows that relate to the discontinued operation from investing, financing and, and operating activities. And then on the SFP, if it's been sold, there's no assets. 
there's no liabilities it's gone so, so there's nothing there but if it hasn't been disposed of just yet and it is a disposal group held for sale then therefore you would show it as a disposal group held for sale on the statements of financial position okay uh, so that's just the background there in terms of the rules about when or when it is not discontinued okay uh, if we go through there and have a look at the example on discontinued operations uh, what have we got uh, well it says explain how the decision to close the car manufacturing operation so that would be a significant or major line of business how should that be treated in Angola's financial statements? So, SFP, profit or loss for the two years, uh, December X5 and X6. Okay. Uh, so it says that Angola's car manufacturing operation has been making substantial losses. Maybe they did an impairment review when it was making substantial losses. Uh, and it says, following a meeting of the board of directors, it was decided to close down the car manufacturing operation on the 31st of March 20x6. Uh, the company's reporting date is the 31st of December and the operation is treated as a separate operating segment. So therefore, the results are available if it is discontinued. OK, uh, so what you've got there is the two years. Is it the 20x5 and is it the uh, 20x6? Okay, uh, because what we've got there uh, is we need to think about it being a discontinued operation. Uh, if it's discontinued, it either needs to have been sold or classified as a non current asset held for sale. So in 20x5, has it been sold? No. Okay. Uh, has it been classified as hell for sale? Uh, no. Okay. You know that they decided to close it down in 20x6. I know that's close to the end of the previous reporting date, but no okay the decision was made in 20x6 wasn't it It doesn't reflect anything about what was going on in 20x5 so, so ultimately what you've got there is that it is not a discontinued operation okay uh what have we got then uh, well, in 20x6, uh, has it been sold? Uh, doesn't seem to have been. But uh, is it there held for sale? Yes. They've made the decision to close it down and to go through there and sell it on to, to somebody else. Okay. So, therefore, it will be a discontinued operation in 20x6. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Uh, let's just go through there and finish it all off with regards to our discontinued operations. You've got the final example there. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's nothing too challenging about it. It's just to show you how you would see it within an exam. Uh, so what we've got here, uh, as it says, prepare the statement of profit or loss uh, and other comprehensive income for the year ended 2017, uh, complying with the provisions of IFRS 5, disclosing the information, the face of the statement of profit or loss uh, and other comprehensive income. So here, uh, it's there on the on the face. Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, what we can do is we can go through there and have a look at the results. So what you can see here is that the top figures here, this is all the the totals, 
the total revenues, the total costs for the continuing and the discontinued operation. Uh, what you've then got here is it says during the year we ran down a material business operation uh, with all activities ceasing on the 30th of March 2017. Okay. Uh, so what we've got here, this is. The discontinued aspect. Okay. Uh, so what we can go through and do there is we can separate out the results. We can go through that and within our statement of profit or loss, we can look at the continuing operations. Is it there for 2017? And is it there 2016? Okay. And then what we need to go through and do is split out the results, isn't it? Okay. So there, with regards to my revenue, uh, it was 700. But of that 60 relate to, is it there, the continue, discontinued operations? So the continuing figure there, is it 640? And then similar approach for the prior year, you've got 550. And is it 70? So does that go through there? And give me, is it 480? Okay. Uh, it's not too exciting after that, because then literally you just go through there, don't we? Uh, and copy it down for all the other areas. So is it there? Uh, cost of sales. Gross profit distribution, admin, profit from operations. Okay, we, we've ignored everything to do with tax. Okay, you, you could have tax in there, but we're just keeping it simple. Okay, uh, just notes. Uh, it does go through there and say, doesn't it, uh, that we made some gains of 7,000 on the disposal of non current assets of the discontinued operation. And these have been netted off against our administrative expenses. OK, uh, so what we've got there is you can see that within those administrative expenses, there are some gains that have been made. So in the disclosure note, you could separate that out independently from everything else that is happening. But let's carry on. So my cost of sales, uh, I think, is it the, does it come to 260? And is it 215? Does that give me 380? And 265. In my gross profit. Okay. Uh, you then got the, is it... The distribution costs, uh, so they were 100 less 13, so is that there as 87? And then for the prior year, you've got 70 less 14, is that 56? Uh, the admin. Don't worry about that 7,000 just yet. Yeah, just strip everything out. Uh, so 70 less 10 is 60. And 60 less 12 is 48. So we have 60. We have 48. That will then give me, if I total it up, is it 2, 3, 3? And 161. Okay. Uh, and that is my profit from my continuing operations. Okay. Uh, we then need to go through and look at the discontinued ops.
So in my discontinued operations, I think in both we have a loss, don't we? So you have your loss. Probably your discontinued operations is that there as three. And is it one? Uh, and then you can net that off, can't you? To work out the profit for the year. So is that 230 and 160? Okay. Uh, just note that what you would have with regards to that loss from the discontinued operations. Uh, you've shown it separately on the face there. You could go through then and have a note to the accounts. And that note would be the for your discontinued operations. Uh, what have we got? Okay, well, let me just make sure I get the correct numbers within there and I get my pages right. And there we have it. Okay, so what you would have there is that you would have, and I'll just do it for the one year, you would have revenue, is it of 60 in 2017? Cost of sales will be there as 40. Distribution costs will be there as 13. Admin, you just need to be careful because I think that will be 17 because that's where you now take effect of that 7,000 there. There's a gain in admin expenses. That gain of 7 will have reduced it down to 10. So therefore it must have been 17. Okay, so you can go through that, uh, and I think 40, 50, 60, 70, so does that give me the, a loss of 10, but don't forget I then have the gain on disposal of 7, which brings me down. to my total loss, okay? And that then goes through and ties in exactly to what you have on the face of the financial statement. Sorry, my computer just nearly fell on the floor. My whole life flashed before me, okay? It's like, <gasps> more expense. Uh, I'll finish it off. Uh, 2016, you'll have, is it 70? I think it was 45, 14. 12, does that give me 1? There was no gain or loss on disposal. So that gives me the 1 there. Okay, there we go. And what you've got now is that that figure there and that figure there tie in to what you have on your discontinued operations on the face of the financial statements. Okay, there we go. Excellent. See you in the next chapter.